Yes, it's John G. Sutton here. Tales from the Jails. I want to talk today about Her Majesty's Young Offenders Institution, Weatherby, which used to be a RAF base, but it was converted in the late 1950s, and in 1958 it was opened as a borstal. They don't have postals now, but anyway, this year it is now a young offenders institution. And uh, believe it or not, at uh, Weatherby, you know, they they have got uh, an army cadet unit, an army cadet unit. Yeah. Now I don't know about you, but my experience of the army is that they train people to go out with guns and shoot. And kill people. And they're using this army cadet unit where they bitch train the young offenders. What are they training them to be? And also at Weatherby, they've got uh, the, the Church of England, they've got Church of England chaplain, and they've got uh, various religious services. But you've got to remember this, remember this. I mean, I'm sure that you do know it. Ask yourself this question. Who set up the Church of England? Who who, who who developed? Who was it? Well, let me tell you who it was. First of all, he was a serial killer. He was a womanizer. He was an egotistical thieving maniac, and uh, he w- he went by the name of Henry the Eighth. Seriously, decapitated. A number of his wives, and he set up a church when when the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church would not give him authority to divorce his wives. He decided there must be an answer to this. Me being King Henry the Eighth, I tell you what, instead of divorcing them, let's decapitate them, take them away to the tower and chop off their heads, which people did. And then he got, I think he must have had a little bit of remorse, you know, but one of them moments, you know, when you reflect, you know, perhaps I shouldn't do that. So instead of doing that, I'll raid all the Roman Catholic monasteries, all the abbeys around the country, steal all their gold, all their, all their money, and put it in the coffers, my coffers, Henry VIII, yeah? And then I'll invent another church... And uh, what shall I call it? Mm, I know, we'll call it the Church of England, seeing as I'm the King of England. How about that? That's what he did. And at HM Young Offenders Institution, Weatherby, they've got a Church of England chaplain. I hope he's not teaching them how to decapitate people. Don't you? What a setup this is. You're being lied to, you know. You're being lied to. All these people who talk about uh, uh, about being a member of the church and all this, that and the other. Where, where does it stem from? A serial killing, murdering maniac. Seriously. Anyway, at HM Young Offenders Institution Weatherby, which is located in Yorkshire, by the way, not far from Leeds, uh, there is uh, an inmate there called Kyle Scumbag Buckley. Oh, sorry. Scumbag's not his middle name. It's it's what he's known as. Yeah, a scumbag. And he got a homemade shank, which he fashioned out of a lunk of wood, which he put a metallic screw through the end, and he used that to attack prison officers. See, the problem with doing that uh, is that you get yourself in in front of the magistrate's court, or the Crown Court, as it transpired with Kyle Buckley. And as he was already serving life sentence for murder, I mean, he committed a murder when he was 16, and he must still be under the age of 21, uh, and in and in uh, this Young Offenders Institution at Weatherby. And not only did he do that, he got a kettle of boiling water and threw that over a member of staff, which severely scalded them. Anyway, he managed to get himself in front of the Crown Court, and they sentenced him to 18 months imprisonment concurrent to his current sentence in other words nothing except 
the prosecution service decided to appeal and on appeal it was held that he should serve his 18 month sentence concurrent uh, consecutively so they switched it from being a concurrent sentence which would run alongside his life sentence to a sentence that would start at the end of his uh, life sentence for murder. So when will he ever get out? I mean, he's ruining his life here. But, I mean, they'll train him, put him in the uh, Army Cadet Corps, which they've got there, of course. Yeah, teach him how to shoot uh, military weapons. And then send him off to uh, meet people and, and kill them. She seems to have a, an, adapted a certain style in doing yeah so there we have it that's uh scumbag at uh, weatherby kyle buckley and if you're watching this kyle you know where i am lad yeah i've got the old-fashioned remedy here yeah straight on your snot box that's the problem these days staff don't seem to have the answer do they i don't know if they've emasculated them but when I was there, you know, if somebody threw boiling water over me, well, I'd sting for a bit, but not as long as they'd be stinging. Anyway, uh, thought that was then, this is now. Here we are, Tales from the Jails. I hope you've all got my copy of my book. Yeah, HMP, Manchester Prison Officer. It's there on Amazon. You can get it, folks. And uh, yesterday we had a funny poem by Spike Milligan which people seem to like. Yeah, thanks for liking that. And don't forget, leave me comments here, you know. Insults, observations. I don't mind. Hmm? I like it. And I do my best to answer. You've noticed that. It's not like one of these sites where you just get the old waffle and then nobody comes back to you. You're actually getting me responding. In kind, by the way. Anyway, I'm going to do you one of my a happy poem here. It's kind of a... An alliteration poem. I'm going to read you this. Are, are you sitting comfortably? Because I am about to bugger it up for you. Th this is a poem called Miranda by Richard Hagman. And it's rather, uh, as I say, an alliteration poem. Alliteration is round the rocks, a rabbit, rabbit, rang, you know, it's like that, yes. Yeah. So this is, this is called Miranda. Take a deep breath, John. It's all right. There you go. I'm talking to myself. Now look what you've got me doing. Do you remember an inn, Miranda? Do you remember an inn? And the tedding and the spreading of the straw for a bedding and the fleas that tease in the high Pyrenees and the wine that tasted of tar and the cheers and the jeers of the young muleteers under the vine of the dark veranda. Do you remember an inn, Miranda? Do you remember an inn? And the cheers and the jeers of the young muleteers who hadn't got a penny and who weren't paying any and the hammer at the doors and the din and the hip-hop hap of the clap of the hands to the twirl and the swirl of the girl gone chancing, glancing, dancing, backing and advancing, snapping of the clapper to the spin out and in and the ting-tong tang of the guitar. Do you remember an inn, Miranda? Do you remember an inn? Never more, Miranda, never more. Only the high peaks hoar and the arrogant a torrent at the door, nor sound in the walls of the halls where falls they tread, of the feet of the dead to the ground, no sound but the boom of the waterfall like doom. Do you remember an inn, Miranda? There you go. Miranda by Richard Hagman. I sincerely hope you like that, folks. And uh, don't forget to leave me a comment and get my book. It's essential. It's got to be number one on Amazon. Otherwise, you'll be setting me now. We'll speak again. <laughs>